Iowa with a dominating performance against Indiana. A runaway road victory for the Hawkeyes. Who's your daddy? All right, that was a little nerdy. Let's have some fun today. Our Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in once again to the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. I'm Trent Condon, and thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. Available wherever you get podcasts, and you can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode of Locked On Hawkeyes is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Well, hopefully you didn't listen to my gambling advice for this one here this evening as I was all about the Hoosiers coming into this one after the huge comeback victory against Michigan State after what we saw there going on the road. What a struggle it's been for Iowa seemingly all season long. Short of the Rutgers game this year, it has been a difficult, difficult stretch for Iowa on the road. Yet here in this one, completely different. They come out on fire, jump out to an early lead, and just keep their foot on the gas the whole way through in a 90-68 win against Indiana. Now, as we speak here at this moment, in an instant reaction late in the evening, well, we don't quite have the numbers that we're looking for as it pertains to how far up the NCAA net that they jumped up. But in the Ken Pomeroy rankings, a 10-spot jump up as they make the a big leap after the victory. The Hawkeyes currently, after this one, are now 34 in those rankings that are pretty similar usually uh, to the net rankings. There's a few outliers out there and a few different ways that things are measured in comparison to the way that Ken Pomeroy does it. But overall, certainly one of the craziest things. You know, coming into this game, I, I didn't have a lot of optimism. You know, we, we talk about that from time to time here on Lockdown Hawkeyes. That Yes, I'm not the most optimistic guy as it pertains to the Hawkeyes. And... It can be a little bit of a sad sack sometime. Here's a number for you. Just absolutely baffled by this coming in to the game. So there's a, another one of those metric sites that I, I talk about a lot of them. I talk about Bartorvik. I talk about Ken Pomeroy. Uh, there's Evan Maya. And another one, Haslam. Haslammetrics.com. So just another one of these analytic sites. You can play around with it. I with fourth best offense in the country defensively up to 160th. That's an improvement in the rankings there. But he has another data point here and talking about teams away from home consistency and how this is measured. Now, it says that this makes outcomes for teams, their future games more difficult to predict when you are rated low, if you will, in this metric. It also performs teams home versus away. Well, how about this? There are 363 teams in college basketball. 363. Iowa, basically, in comparison to the way they play on the hold, home, coming into the game, they were a last in the country. They were, in comparison for how good they are at home, the worst team on the country on the road in comparison. That is a significant gap. And what do they do? They go up against an Indiana team that was playing incredibly well. Coming off the heels of another win against Purdue, their second straight against the Hoosiers this season. Indiana was starting to become that buzz team. If there was somebody that was going to get to the Final Four, it's not going to be Purdue. It's going to be this Indiana team. And what does Iowa do? They just absolutely clobber them up and down the floor. 90-68. Let's get into it. Let's start with my guy, Tony Perkins. If you've been listening to Lockdown Hawkeyes for a while, you know my affinity for the junior guard out of Indiana. There's always been something about him, his ability to get into the lane. It's something that I was just lacked. You know, they haven't had a guy that has had his kind of skill set before, and he's a guy that I've always been intrigued with. You, you watch the NCAA tournament, or you watch a lot of college basketball like I do. Yeah, you'd love to have them breaking down point guard, and, you know, after years of Mike Cassell and then into Jordan Bohan and over the last nine seasons, uh, you're left kind of thinking, all right, you'd like a little bit of a change there. But the two-guard position, I was got shooters. And, and the way that Fran McCaffrey builds his teams, it's not just shooters at the guard position or maybe a swing guy up and down the lineup. They have guys that can shoot it. And I wanted to have and see how it would work to have an athletic guy guard that could get off the bounce, 
get into the paint and make plays like Tony Perkins can. Tony Perkins isn't perfect. That's not what it is. And we've seen some big slumps from him this year. In fact, you go back to the first Indiana game when Iowa came roaring back to win that one against the Hoosiers in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Tony Perkins didn't play that well in that game. Went in a slump. The Rutgers road win. Uh, the performance against Michigan, another comeback victory against the Wolverines. Those games, Tony Perkins didn't play very well. He's been battling an injury all season long. Uh, you talk to guys on the beat, and they will tell you just every single time that they have an opportunity to meet with Tony Perkins. He's limping around. He's struggling physically. But when he gets out there on the hardwood and he just gains a little bit of confidence, we know how good he is. Against Illinois, time in and time out, just getting into the paint. He's averaging nearly five assists a game now over the last six. Eight assists in this one, a double-double to go along with it. 23 points, 10 rebounds. You know, how big he was with the boards. How about even just getting Iowa to hang around Saturday against Michigan State? His three-pointers hit a career high at Carver in that one from downtown. On and on and on. Also, I went back because I was so excited after watching this game. I had to go back again for the 50th time and watch the last couple of minutes of the Iowa-Michigan State game from Saturday. And again, he was running the point guard position so much. So we talked about this a lot coming into the year. Tony Perkins are just something different with the ball in his hands. And you go back to last season when Iowa started to play their best basketball in February and into March before the clunker in the tournament. You saw what they were doing, even with Bohannon out there, it was Tony Perkins a lot of times getting the offense going and doing a lot of things for this squad on the offensive end, getting the offense generated. There is just something special about this guy. Love to see it. For all accounts, just an absolutely incredible, incredible person. A captain three times, I mentioned on the broadcast tonight, and Tony Perkins. Great feeling for him going back to Indiana. You look at his offer list coming out of high school. It was Ball State, Iowa, Toledo. Wasn't a whole lot of depth and breadth to that offer list. Iowa was the only power conference team that believed in Tony Perkins. Fran McCaffrey. And we continue to go back to Fran's ability to identify talent. Oh, this was a great one. Love Tony Perkins. Love his game. Love that performance. Love the attitude that he brings and just gets that swagger going with this team. And we go back to where we've been back and forth with this team. There's been a lot of highs. There's been plenty of lows this season. As we go back and forth throughout the course of the year, the one thing that I continually go back to is that ability that this team has to have that swagger, to have that confidence. Peyton Sanford, of course, will remember the technical foul at the end of the game as he kisses to the crowd. Now, you talk about weak. Now, Marshall Henderson for Ole Miss, you remember him a decade back. I mean, he's there against Auburn, flashing his jersey in front of a bunch of people. He didn't get a technical foul for that. And now we're throwing tees, not for taunting opponents. Robbie Hubble was baffled by it. For, not for op opponents, but for kissing to the crowd. I mean, George Niang, boy, he would have got a technical back in the day. It, it was weak, but that's okay. I mean, if that's what we have to complain about here tonight, that's really it. We're in really, really good shape. I'll take 22-point road victories if it comes along with a technical late in the game as you're blowing them out of the water. But not only that, but Sanford, Trace Jackson Davis picked up his second charge against Robracha. Great defense again for Robracha. The first one, definitely 50-50. The second one, there's no doubt about it. It was a charge. It was a great call. And Sanford gets down to an eight, and he's pointing the other way. After Mike Woodson gets a technical foul, he's over there and walking over saying, he got a T, got a T. I mean, just, he's goofy. He's a goober. He's our goober. It's, these are the exciting moments about this team. And, and again, when you start to dream and as down as I was last week and for the first 38 minutes of the game against Michigan State, and, and I'll be honest, the first 39 minutes and 15 seconds of the game against Michigan State, and yet they come roaring back. I know any team. At any level of basketball, you're hitting shots. Teams are going to look pretty good. Even the worst teams, you're hitting shots. And you're hitting 17 three-pointers. You're going to be in really, really good shape. And to come back after that performance against Michigan State, to be up right away, no lull, no letdown, nothing like that. And certainly that could have been the case for Indiana to come out there and just put an absolute whooping on them. Boy, it feels good. If you grew up like I did you know, back in the 80s and the 90s in Indiana basketball, they were right there. Yeah, the Fab Five was a big deal, but before that, it was about the Hoosiers and their national championship in 1987 and what those rivalries meant. And there was just something special about taking on the candy stripers and, and getting wins against that program. And it still resonates for me here today. It feels extra good to beat that Indiana team. 
boy, they were not happy with their whistle either. Oh, the Boo Birds, they were raining down all throughout that game. It just makes it even that much sweeter. Great victory for the Hawkeyes. Sanford off the bench, he was really good. Also, how about Fran early in the ball game as I was racing out to that early lead? Gets cut to three, they respond once again. But how often he just stuck with his starters. It was the starters for the first eight plus minutes of the game. Didn't go away from them as they were playing incredibly well. Sanford, Patrick, those guys came in. We saw a little bit of Josh Dix. Got to see a Gundalay appearance a couple of times very late in the game. And before that, what about the 10 minute mark? He came in for a couple of minutes there, huffed and puffed up and down the floor. Used a little bit more of the bench, but hey, when you're up 25 against Indiana, you can certainly do that. Connor McCaffrey, you know, he was just out there doing Connor things. And again, credit to Philip Robracha. This dude out there going up against an All-American and Trace Jackson Davis playing as well as anybody in the country coming into the game, and he still got his. And he's still a really talented player. But Baracha's out there just battling, giving up two, three, four inches of height against a lot of the centers in this league, giving up size, and he battles and he grinds. I was second in the Big Ten this year in offensive rebounds. Their rebounding has made immense improvements this year in a lot of big spots. Certainly something to keep an eye on this year with this Iowa team. You know, Chris Murray, maybe not the same kind of rebounder that Keegan was. And certainly Rebracha, not the same kind of skill that he had in size and certainly the size you normally want at the center position. But guys like Tony Perkins helps out a little bit. He can come in and get Connor. He'll get a rebound for you. Ulis is willing to go in there and make some plays in the paint just on and on and on. Sanford, pretty good rebounder for a guy that's not exactly the most athletically gifted guy out there. Six foot eight, obviously has the size, but you put all this together and they're out there and they're working. Yeah, the defense isn't great. Yeah, the offense, well, you got to hit it shots to make it happen. But when it's clicking like this, boy, is there anything better? The Hawkeyes run past the Hoosiers. With that, we look forward. A matchup now looming against Nebraska at home with a ton on the line. Iowa could still finish as low as the eighth seed in the Big Ten tournament if they fall to the Huskers. How high can the Hawkeyes go? We've crunched the numbers. We'll talk about that as we continue. Big picture, what does this Iowa win, me win mean for the team as we look at NCAA tournament projections? That's all as we continue here on Locked On Hawkeyes. Today's episode of the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook, great place to go. NBA season, college basketball season, it is here in full swing, and it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers, you can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line, the point spread, three-pointers made. You look at the NBA games coming up. There's so much going on this week as they get back in their final 20 games or so of the season and even exclusive bets that they have at FanDuel, like their two-by-three bet. What's this? Two three-pointers in the first three minutes of the game. You're going to know early if you are up at FanDuel. Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Don't miss your chance at your no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. Again, it's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Try kind of back with you again here on Locked On Hawkeyes. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our new podcast, Locked On College Basketball, as we flip the calendar here today to March. Everything you need to know about college hoops in one spot. You can hear from the big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players with Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. So as we look at what this victory means, it completely changes the complexion of where we were and where it felt like just... If I would have lost to Michigan State, we're talking about a team that could have fallen all the way down and be playing on Wednesday. Now, there's a realistic possibility that Iowa not only is going to get the double bye, being a top four seed in the Big Ten tournament, that they could be the number two seed in the Big Ten tournament. That's what it is. So let's start with the double bye, being a top four seed, not having to play until Friday the Big Ten tournament. 
basically advance all the way to the quarterfinals with the structure of the conference tournament. So what does that mean in order for this to happen? If, again, putting the caveat in there, a win against Nebraska. That would change things if the Hawkeyes drop one to the Cornhuskers. But if they win Sunday against Nebraska, the only way Iowa will not get a double bye is this. Michigan has to win both their games. They go to Illinois and to Indiana. Again, they have to win both of them. Coupled with Maryland winning both of their games against Ohio State on the road and home for Penn State. Finally, Northwestern needs to beat both Penn State and on the road at Rutgers. So all six of those games have to go that way. If that doesn't happen and Iowa beats Nebraska, they are going to get the double bye. Here's another cool number uh, that I was able to track down on Twitter. And uh, let me give credit to where credit is due. This comes from Matt Hackman. And I also uh, retweeted this on the Locked On Hawkeyes account. You can find it right there. Basically, this is probabilities running simulation scenarios with weighted averages in terms of percentage chance of winning all the games. What it spits out here is this. Iowa right now, their best, most likely seed in the Big Ten tournament is the number two seed. 39% of the time in these simulations, Iowa is the two seed. They're also the number three seed 30% of the time. So we're talking 69% chance of being a a second or a third seed. 9% for four all the way down to the number eight seed, a 2% chance of that. Obviously, that would be with a loss to for, uh, to Nebraska on Sunday. So chances of a double buy. Mathematically, Iowa has a 79% chance of getting the double buy. That's where we are. Iowa in really good shape, completely changing the complexion of this team. So want to jump over as well and uh, take a look at bracketologists out there and what they have done here this evening, including Shelby Mass, who I've talked about before here on Lock- Locked On Hawkeye. Shelby Mass is... The Bracketologist on my radio show, you can hear me daily on Des Moines Sports Station KXNO from 11 to 1, talking the world of sports and plenty of Hawkeye talk over there. So Iowa has uh, moved up his seed list. They are still a number seven seed, but now the top number seven seed coming into the day, they were the bottom seed. So basically jumped up uh, three spots. So just a spot away from getting to a six seed line. Realistically, that six seed, if Iowa can get there, it's just such a great path to make a run into the Sweet 16. First of all, you open things up against an 11. A lot of times that's an 11 seed coming off a game in Dayton. That happens quite often where you see those play-in rounds, if you will, those 11 seeds trying to make their way into the main bracket, the 64-team bracket from Dayton. Uh, The way that he has it set up here, he would have Iowa taking on the winner of Michigan and USC. So just there, uh, there's one of those pigtails. But the biggest thing is who he'd face in the round of 32. And and ultimately, you hate to say it, because this team, as inconsistent as it's been, frustrating as it's been at time, they're they're fun to watch. They're entertaining. It's a brand of basketball that you can get behind. You know, it's not the bully ball. It's not the clutch and grab garbage style that we see employed by so many colleges out there that are just, at times, completely unwatchable. What Todd Licklider tried to do to our fine university and basketball program, none of that garbage. It's real basketball. The flow, the offense, all the things. Yeah, do you get mad at the defense? Absolutely. Can the offense get bogged down when you're not hitting shots? Sure, but that happens to everybody. It's an entertaining brand of basketball that we get. And as entertaining and as fun as it's been at times this year, if it ends in a thud, again, in the NCAA tournament, I know where the conversation is going to go and where it's going to continue to go. And it's about just getting to a sweet 16. Look, we're not asking for the world here. We're not talking about final fours. We're not talking about winning national championships. We're just talking about winning two games in the NCAA tournament in the same season to get to the second weekend. Well, if you are a number six seed, here's the current number threes. Tell me who scares you uh, from this bracket from Shelby Mast of USA Today. Kansas State, I've seen the Wildcats that are a two-man team this year. Definitely not nervous about that matchup. Marquette. I don't know how good the Big East is this year. I watch plenty of Big East basketball. I I like the style. I like the brand. I like the jerseys that go along with it. I don't think the Big East is very good this year. Marquette, they are the conference winner, but certainly not a world beater. You know, this is a team that didn't get into the portal, didn't do a whole lot in the offseason. They bet on themselves. Shaka Smart, though, hasn't been a great coach in the NCAA tournament. That's a matchup. Certainly doesn't scare you. Tennessee, with their woes offensively, now they're going to guard you. They're going to grind you. And Rick Barnes, another guy that's had some 
questionable performances in the NCAA tournament. And the final number three seed in Shelby's bracket right now is Gonzaga. It's not the same Gonzaga team certainly we've seen over the last three years there. And Timmy's a beast inside, but Rabracha, you know, he's going to be going there every single time. Richard Bolton, that guy scare you? No, absolutely not. Uh, sign me up. Get to that six seed line. I, I think the opportunity is absolutely there for Iowa to make a run in the NCAA tournament. And that's where they are. They are right on the pe precipice of getting back to that. Beat Nebraska, double pie. That is, is what in front of this Iowa team. Iowa gets it done. I couldn't be more surprised. I really can't. And, and boy, it feels good to be wrong sometimes. And boy, was I dead wrong on this one. Iowa with the win over Indiana. And we will continue to get ready for the weekend. The scenarios that are out there, everything that's going to be happening as we continue on. We'll continue on here on Locked On Hawkeyes. Not just hoops talk today. There's plenty going on in the world of Hawkeye athletics. We got some football news as the four individuals listed in the case against the University of Iowa, the Board of Regents, and four football coaches, well, their names no longer are a part of that. We'll explain that to you uh, when we come back here. The seeds are out for Big Ten Wrestling. Iowa basketball with a Thanksgiving tournament in the books for next year. And Brody Breck suspended for four games after he was ejected from the game against LSU. After he was already pulled from the game, he got an ejection. Now a four-game suspension. Leaves me scratching my head. We'll talk about that next year on Locked On Hawkeyes. Trent kind of back with you one final time on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. As always, thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. As we wrap things up here, uh, kick things off. Brody Brecht, a four-game suspension. Now, ultimately, it's not a huge issue. Iowa makes their way down. They'll be on the road again coming up this weekend. Got their home opener, in fact, last night and got the win against Loris a 9-2. But Brecht suspended for four games. He'll be eligible to pitch Sunday against Pepperdine. I would anticipate that that's what they're going to do. He was effectively wild against LSU and getting the win against the number one team in the country, though Iowa didn't jump into the main baseball poll. I saw a couple of the polls out there. Top 25s did have the Hawkeyes in there after their performance. And, you know, I, I saw some hand wringing that LSU remained number one. Folks, that's a good thing. Keep them up there. Keep that quality victory up there for Iowa all season long. If LSU has a season that many people anticipate, that's nothing but a good thing for the Hawkeyes. Go Tigers! All season long here this year, we're going to be LSU fans and trying to get Iowa back to the NCAA tournament this baseball season. For a four-game suspension there, I also mentioned Iowa. They're going to be making their way to San Diego in hoops uh, next year as they will be taking on a uh, quartet of teams, four-team tournament that will be happening there Uh USC is uh, one of the matchups that they will have taken on. The Trojans are one of the four teams there. Uh, what else we got in that one? I believe I uh, deleted the email now as I'm looking for it here on the fly, trying to get us in front of it. Eh, scrolling through, scrolling through. There we go. We got it right here. So, yes, USC, one of the four teams there, along with Seton Hall, who we saw, of course, this year in the Gavit Games out there, got the win against them. Boy, it'd be nice if they could get a win or two and get back into the top 75 and give Iowa another quad one victory, help out for the seeding in Oklahoma. Uh, the Sooners with Porter Moser and company will also be there next season. Two-day event. It will happen on Thursday and Friday, Thanksgiving week coming up. That is November 23rd and 24th. So make your plans. If you're looking for something to do over the holiday season, hey, an opportunity to watch a little Iowa basketball in San Diego. Doesn't sound too bad in November, does it? Absolutely not. So finally, Iowa and the dismissal of the individuals for the uh, case against them from Akron Wadley and a host of other former Iowa football players. That, that has been out there now for a little while. Plenty of conversation about it. Uh, ask Biz, who you saw on yesterday's podcast. He's a lawyer. That's his real job. Uh, it's not just hanging out with me every couple of weeks and talking Hawkeye sports. But he did explain it a little bit. The settlement... If there's a settlement, they would be dismissed with prejudice. And what that basically means is, yes, that there was something behind it. What Biz said in a text that he says he believes that it means they're going to settle, and now none of the individuals will have to admit that they messed anything up, that there was any mistake on their part. So it, that's basically what this is. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I, I think many people are trying to paint it in a particular light. 
this thing ultimately, the way that it plays out, not having Kirk Ferentz have to be up there on the stand, Brian Ferentz on the stand, uh, Chris Wallace, who was dismissed uh, not too long ago from the case, Gary Bard and company, that ultimately, that's a good thing. Court cases can get ugly. And we'll see how this ultimately plays out. A lot of people believe, though, ultimately it will end in some kind of settlement, not from the individual coaches and the people associated with the athletic department, but instead with people that are involved, University of Iowa, the Board of Regents, something will come down from that level. Hey, I'm not a lawyer. I don't even try to pretend I'm one right here. What I do pretend, I don't have to pretend. I love this Hawkeye basketball team, usually. And certainly it happened here tonight. I got to get some shut eye back at it tomorrow with more Lockdown Hawkeyes. As always, thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every single day. And for your second listen, check out our new podcast, Lockdown College Basketball, with our experts, Isaac Shade and Andy Patton, bringing you everything you need to know on and off the floor. Plus, hear from the big names, the experts, the coaches, the players, all throughout college basketball with Lockdown College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. Well, that was a fun one tonight. Glad to have you aboard with us here on a instant reaction locked on now podcast here. We'll be back with you tomorrow and the rest of the week as we flip the calendar to March and look forward to March madness. It began with the bang as February came to a close Iowa, a five and three record 11 and five in the big 10 after that. zero and three start now just a win away from the Huskers from a double by realistically, and maybe even potentially the number two seed in the Big Ten tournament. Who would have thought it? We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks.